Hey everyone, so the one year anniversary of Elden Ring happened a few days ago at this point. I know I am like mega mega late to the party with getting this video out, but yeah, the one year anniversary of the game happened and I thought, you know what? I will jump online and play some PvP. This video or all of these sessions were actually recorded on the 25th, which again was the one year anniversary. It just took me a while to get around to getting some commentary on this. And yeah, in this video I just want to sort of reminisce about Elden Ring, talk about the game itself and talk about PvP because you know what? I honestly can admit that I might have been a little too quick to judge PvP in this game when I first started. Legit, this is my second session of playing PvP in this game. The first time, naturally, I tried the arenas when they were released with my like terrible first build, which just didn't go too well. And I'm not saying like I'm a PvP expert or anything. In fact, don't expect too many victories in this video. Obviously, again, this is only my second time, so I'm getting used to things. I definitely have some observations. This wouldn't be a FromSoft game if the builds weren't full of cheap shit. And I saw plenty of cheap shit. And, you know, that's the nice thing about all of the cheap builds being very easily researchable at this point because you sort of just know what you're getting yourself into. On the other hand, this build I'm using, I think I've concluded, is fairly terrible and you'll see me later switch to my magic character, which actually will do way better, but yeah, I'm using the Ice Rapier, which, you know, Frostbite equals OP, uh, maybe not for the Ice Rapier, not even Ice Rapier, what is it called? Frozen Needle. I have Dark Souls 2 on my mind. I mean, it's basically the extremely neutered version of the Ice Rapier. Uh, the Frozen Needle is just very short and I don't like inflict Frostbite with it often, only a couple of times, and it just doesn't have the damage output, even though I did respec my build like people told me to. The one benefit it has is that it has a free projectile, as in free as in it doesn't cost FP on the R2s, but that's about it. I'm also using the Reduvia, I respect into a pure dex slash arcane build, but well, shit just ain't working out. But you know, uh, you'll see later, as soon as I switched to the mage, I started suddenly doing way better, because that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, can't believe it's been one year since Elden Ring's release. It's actually kind of crazy to think about, because, you know, I've played a lot of this game, and I've had... Like my, I, I really like this game, I just want to point out, but, you know, I had my ups and downs with it where I sort of believed that this game wasn't as replayable as uh, most of the other Souls games or From games. I just call them Souls games, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and in some respects, I still kind of believe that's true, but I really, really like this, uh, this game. I'm currently on my, I think, fourth... Yeah, fourth playthrough. I'm playing a strength build now because I just want to try a strength build. And it's actually really fun. But yeah, in many ways this game is in sort of a weird position because of its open world nature. And it being a Souls game. Because you guys know, Souls games rely very heavily on replayability. And replaying a game that is like at least a 60 to 70 hour investment is just, I think, not feasible for most people. And it's very interesting, you'll notice how people play this game multiple times on second, third, or however many playthroughs. The sort of engagement you have with the open world is significantly reduced. And I really noticed this on my current fourth playthrough as well. Basically, I am getting like zero engagement out of the open world in that I'm just getting on my horse I'm horse riding to all of the dungeons and all of the areas that have the shit I want to use as part of my build and then just moving forward and It's such an interesting dynamic because you know you have this huge game and 
essentially you're only interacting with the things you want for your build and naturally the mandatory content and again there are several factors that play into this it's not like a negative of Elden Ring because no game should be designed or could be designed to infinite replayability and infinite playthroughs but it's interesting that this occurs with Elden Ring and doesn't necessarily occur with the other games in the franchise because Again, I think it's just the size of this game and nobody has the time and capacity to invest uh, 70 hours each time they replay this game. And secondly, in many ways I do very much respect the choice to keep all the loot and everything non-randomized. I think it very much helps the quality of the open world. I think that's one thing that everybody, including me, points out that Elden Ring's open world works and is fantastic because it is designed with intent instead of just, you know, randomly generating enemy checkpoints like a fucking Far Cry game or something. But that does mean that uh, because everything is fixed, you just know where to go, you get your stuff and you move on. And, you know, again, I'm not pointing this out as either a positive or a negative, it's just an observation on how little the game allows you or the game mandates you to interact with the world but you know i respect that it's all about player choice and this game definitely gives you that you cannot say it doesn't give you player choice i think it's just interesting that um again that's sort of just the dynamic that developed i i man some of these connections online are just ridiculous like this game has terrible connections like the rapiers and what are they called heavy thrusting swords and spears just have ridiculous phantom range like this is the prime example this is a great spear this is the serpent hunter the one you use for right card and this shows up everywhere like everybody uses this thing and i read up on it it's because it has like a great move set and also huge huge phantom range and boy have i noticed Boy, have I noticed. And again, just back to the open world itself in general. Uh, I think the other thing that plays into this aspect of like how much you interact with the open world of Elden Ring and the world in general is that I think From did sort of screw up a little bit with the rune scaling. I've said this many times before during my playthroughs that in my honest opinion, most of the field enemies and almost all of the field bosses just drop way too few souls, especially for how difficult some of these enemies are. I think the one I always point to is the the gargoyle. The gargoyle you fight on the Altus Plateau before you get into the capital, you know, on that like hill area. That thing is difficult if you're not over leveled when you get there. He's very difficult lot of HP, heavy damage, and all that good shit. And it drops like, what, 5k souls in the end? And I think, again, that sort of plays into that fact that because the reward from the open world is not a lot, rune-wise, it doesn't actually allow you to level up too much. Most of your leveling in Elden Ring is going to be coming from the Legacy Dungeons, and the big bosses. That's where most of your leveling is going to be coming from. And because of that, you sort of just tend to skip the field bosses. Like, referring back to my newest playthrough, you know, I went, I'm using the Rusty Anchor. I went to that cave, I got the Rusty Anchor, and I have not gone into a single cave since then, other than to pick up upgrade materials. So, yeah, again, I think this is just sort of an interesting dynamic of how Elden Ring plays. And the open world is fantastic despite that. I, the more I play this game, actually, the more I both enjoy the open world and enjoy the combat system. I think the combat system, once you figure it out, is actually fantastic. I had my sort of reservations, I mean, Especially compared to all of the other Souls games, as in the Dark Souls games, this game plays differently. I think you have to approach it from a, a different sort of perspective. You need to like really use the tools. Shout out to inventory management there. 
live under pressure uh, you really do have to use your like new tools the jumping attacks the charge attacks the ashes of war i think i've said this before the ashes of war system in this game is the best sort of implementation of this system i've ever seen in these games i think from really nailed it and this is the gold standard and this game is the gold standard movement wise as well on how it feels like if whatever next from product souls game i'm not talking about like armored core doesn't have a jump button it's gonna feel weird it's gonna feel really weird i, th I think i beat this guy by the way yeah i think so look at the tremendous and you know sometimes this phantom hit shit never seems to work in your favor does it it's it's always one of those things but yeah anyways um just going back to what I was saying, uh, I really do think my sort of main criticism of Elden Ring still remains the age-old thing. This has been the thing that bugged me about... This guy was ridiculous, by the way. Like, are fist weapons this strong in PvP? Because this dude just, like, wrecked me. He's using, I think, those two iron balls you get from the crab guy. And this guy just, like I said, absolutely destroyed me. And I'm like, like, what the hell? I think he's wearing armor that has poise too, but holy shit. By the way, shout out to the phantom hit there. Um, yeah, I think, again, if I had to sort of criticize this game for one thing and one thing only, it's been the thing that has bugged me since my very first playthrough and continues to be the thing that bugs me. And that is the late game scaling of this game. Like, mounted top of the giants, and anything post that, the scaling just goes out the window to the territory of ridiculousness. And um, I still believe some of those bosses sort of push the boundaries of what can be fun and what is not fun. By the way, as you can see, I switched to my mage. This character just works way better. First of all, magic is very strong in this build, in, in this game, I should say. And I kind of like that because magic has always been sort of iffy to use in PvP. Except for the dark spells, you know, like Pursuers and shit. But in this game you can really make even a pure caster work if you have... Um, what is it called? Carry and Slicer. But you know, I have the Lazuli sword as a backup. That's a short sword. Those are always great weapons, so... You know, why not use it if you have it? This guy was having an interesting build with the dual halberds, not quite seen that before. Uh, and yeah, this is something I picked up from another player who absolutely destroyed me, which is to use Swift Glintstone Shard. And it really does work. That spell is pretty powerful. So yeah, I think back to... I completely lost my train of thought. Back to this um, sort of discussion of Elden Ring. This video like really has no point. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing here. I guess this is just like again a reminiscion reminiscing on Elden Ring as a whole. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um, the really interesting th thing is gonna be this game's future. Of course everybody knows that the DLC was announced uh, for this game. No news other than a screenshot, which people have already made like 20 minute analysis videos on. Shout out to those people. I mean, you gotta farm the YouTube algorithm. You you just gotta. Uh, and again, I'm really curious what's gonna be uh, like a part of the DLC because FromSoft DLCs are always more difficult than the main game. And I think I said this on one of my streams before. Uh, which, by the way, every Saturday and Tuesday, except this Saturday, I stream. I think I said this on stream before, and I think pretty much everybody agrees that it's very difficult to see where you can go from here uh, in terms of boss difficulty. I think Melania, where they pushed this game with Melania, and even bosses like Elden Beast or... Um, who's the other one? Malekith, all of these bosses. I truly feel like these bosses are pushing the limits of what is possible 
with a Souls combat system. Oh yeah, this guy. This guy had the McDonald's Wi-Fi on, so yeah, shout out to him. Uh, Phantom hitting me with whatever those weapons were. I mean, those are some ugly ass weapons, but yeah. Get off the Mickey D's Wi-Fi, boy. Um, yeah, I'm really curious on how the bosses of the DLC are gonna look and what's gonna be the situation with that, because I truly do fear that From is just gonna try ramping up the difficulty and we are eventually going to get to a point where we'll have a boss that's just completely bullshit. I mean, I think Melania is already there. I know people argue endlessly and people just say that no, Melania is absolutely fair, there's nothing BS about her, you can dodge waterfowl dance. You know what? I call bullshit on that. You cannot tell me that waterfowl dance is a fair move. You cannot tell me that a boss with that much HP and that much damage that heals even off of your shields is not pushing the boundary of what is bullshit and what is not bullshit. And I think that's one of my concerns is that when we do eventually get a boss that's like straight up not good from a difficulty perspective, people are just going to be completely blind and bitch endlessly about how everybody's wrong and no, actually this boss is fair. I beat it rune level one, of course, with a, I don't know, unupgraded club. This is actually a very fair boss. But you know, that's I think more of like a Souls community thing than a boss design thing in general. I always said that uh, for future titles, by the way, this, this spell is very underrated. I just, I just straight up like destroyed this guy who decided to run into the crystal release, which is a little bit of a dirty sounding name, but eh, well, whatever. So yeah, you know, like that analysis video or discussion video I made a couple of months ago, I truly think that for this series to keep pushing the difficulty boundaries, new things really need to be added. Like Sekiro. I think Sekiro is the perfect example of what I mean. I think there is still space to work with for pushing the difficulty of bosses in a game like Sekiro, with Sekiro's combat system and movement system and all that. I do not think there is much more you can push the boss difficulty to in a sort of combat system that uses these mechanics, these standard Dark Souls slash Elden Ring mechanics. So I'm really curious on where FromSoft is gonna take things. I do have hope and I think again the new game if it sort of adopts a little bit of what Sekiro did it's going to be it's going to be where the future of this series lies, but you know, that is still years and years and years out. We just had Elden Ring's anniversary that did a lot of damage and yeah, DLC is to come. When? Who the hell knows? I... We can only speculate and I do hope that it's not going to take them like ages to get around to actually getting the DLC out because as much fun as it is to replay this game, sometimes you do want to get into new content. And obviously when the DLC does drop, I'm going to be playing it day one. Anyways, I think this is the last match. You see, this is this is Mr. Sketchhead playing PvP. Um, this is about the skill level, but honestly, as I mentioned, I really enjoy playing PvP in this game, actually. The arena part, of course. Uh, it's always about the arenas for me, instead of like regular invasions. So yeah, maybe I'll keep like trying PvP because it's mad fun. I just gotta figure out what's cheap and what is not cheap. And also how to counter the cheap builds because if you guys don't know, if you haven't been around, that is PvP skill number one you need to pick up. You have your ice rapiers, your great serpent hunters, you need to learn how to deal with that shit. And this build, I think, is the one that has hope. I'll try the third character I played as well, because I was a little bit more focused, you know. My first build was a mess, obviously, it being first build, kind of trying everything. So yeah, that was a mess, but I think I'm getting better. And 
Please tell me I beat this guy. I don't actually know. I don't beat this guy, do I? I genuinely don't. Anyways, I think with that, with the eventual PvP fail you're gonna be seeing in just a bit, the time has come to wrap up this video. Yeah, I don't even know, I just wanted to make a little discussion video to celebrate the one year anniversary of Elden Ring after like seven days have already passed. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, peace out, see you.